thank you everybody for joining us uh, SED Maintainer Track Talk. Uh, uh, my name is Wenjia from Google and I am a SED Maintainer. I'm also a, a co-chair of SED with James here. Um, joining me today uh, in this talk is Yuan and Benjamin. Um, you guys want to have a quick introduction? Hi, uh, I'm Siyuan. Uh, I work for Google and currently I'm a contributor to SCD and API uh, machinery. Hello everyone, I'm Benjamin Wang. I'm from Broadcom. I'm a LCD maintainer and also SIG LCD tech lead. Yeah, thank you. All right, today we have a packed schedule. We will talk about uh, what we have done uh, in the SAD project for the previous couple of months, and then we'll uh, look forward and see what's coming up. So, um, there. Um, SIG SAD is a newly um, started SIG. Uh, some of you probably were uh, in Chicago KubeCon, and uh, it was started like almost right before the uh, Chicago KubeCon. It's the newest SIG in Kubernetes. And um, uh, yeah, um, uh, James and I, uh, we are honored to serve as a chair of the SIG, and Merrick and then uh, Benjamin and Merrick are the tech leads of the SIG SED. So this SIG owns the SED project and how Kubernetes uh, use SED. All right, now Benjamin and Suyuan will give you an uh, introduction of the updates of the project. Hello, I'm Benjamin Wang. Pro, uh, firstly, I will provide some updates on the project. What we have done on Build.6. Yeah. yeah. Firstly, the uh, Build is one of the core dependencies uh, for LCD. We have some improvements on Build. The first improvement is we add a log on, into Build. Previously, Bivolt only returned an error for each API call. Now, Bivolt not only returns an error, but also print log. log. Yeah, we can help the developer to debug the, what's the issue. Yeah. The biggest the progress is we on resolving the data corruption issue. In the past three years, we, uh, we received 18 corruption issues in the community, in both Bivolt and LCD community. The symptom is people may panic when loading the DB files. It took us a long time to analyze all the data graph issue. Eventually, we've identified a couple of reasons. The first reason is when the application insert data into people, you know, the people, the first step, you know, people use BPLAB3 to index all the data. The first step is to, I, to locate the right place for the key. The second step is insert the key value into the place. If the application updated the key in between, then probably the people will insert the key value into the wrong position. This is the first reason for the data corruption. The second reason is coming from Linux kernel feature, fast commit. Fast commit is a feature introduced in Linux kernel 1.10. It may cause data loss in some corner case. Yeah, from people's perspective, the root cause is the system call data sync may return successful, even the corner hasn't synced data successfully. Yeah, please read the link for more detailed information. We also developed some surgery commands to fix the corrupted DB files. But we need to understand the key point to prevent data corruption is redundancy. We can't beat the hardware issue. The disk, the storage may break in product environments. We should have multiple replicas of the data in product environments. For example, multiple members in a cluster or real-time backup so that we can tolerate any single point of failure or corruption. There are some other minor improvements. For example, we support moving buckets inside the same DB file. You know, in people it supports hierarchic bucket structure. Each bucket have, can have some child bucket we can move a bucket from one parent bucket to another parent bucket without moving the data. Yeah, it's minor improvements. We also uh, support inspecting the database structure. For example, what buckets are in the DB file and how many key value pair in each bucket. We also, there, there are also some minor performance improvements. 
Yeah, that's the, we are planning to release Bebolt 1.4.0. Please draft the issue for the DTR release plan. We have already released 1.4.0, alpha zero. Yeah, please draft the change log for the complete change in Bebolt. Yeah, the RAF is the second core dependency for LCD. You know, RAF has already been moved into a separate repo under the LCD organization. We also changed the module name. We removed the LCD from the path. Uh, please draft the issue for the detailed inf information. The biggest change in RAF is we support asynchronous writes. You know, RAF follows a minimalist design philosophy. RAF dedicates the storage networking to the application. So in, in our case, the application is LCD. And the LCD and the RAF communicate with each other via, via our channel. So LCD receive all the message from the RAF channel. In previously, LCD must sync the write or head lock synchronously. We need to, you know, in the, in the, in the right side, in the right side, you can there's a for loop. Previously, LCD must sync the write head lock in each iteration. But now, if they enable the feature, LCD can sync the red hat log asynchronously. It can reduce the end to end latency by 20 to 25%. Yeah, please wrap the PR for more detailed information. There are some other minor uh, features. For example, we add a forget the leader. If we are pretty sure the leader is dead, we can call the forget the leader on their followers and then instruct one follower to campaign. Then it can be reacted as a leader immediately. If we don't call forget the leader, a new leader can also be automatically be elected, but we have to wait for election timeout. The, the purpose of forget the leader, we don't need to forget, wait, no wait at all, just get a new leader elected immediately. We also added a config item, step down on removal. When a leader is removed, we can instruct the leader to step down. Yeah, the uh, please wrap the change log. Uh, yeah. Uh, please wrap the change log for the, all the minor improvements. We are planning to release uh, route 3.6.0. Uh, please wrap the issue for the DTR release plan. We have already released 3.6.0 alpha zero. Yeah, you know, Bebolt and RAF are the two core dependencies for LCD. Both LCD 3.4 and 3.5 depend on Bolt 1.3, and LCD 3.6 depend on Bebolt 1.4. You know, uh, RAF is included in the LCD wrapper in 3.4 and 3.5 release, so there's no dependency. But we moved the RAF into a separate wrapper starting the, from the 3.6, so LCD 3.6 depends on RAF 3.6. Yeah, please wrap the link called dependency mapping for the detailed information. You know, LCD not only support the gRPC API, but also support the REST for API. There are some examples for the REST of API. We, uh, LCD support the REST of API using the gRPC gateway. You know, gRPC gateway V1 works with the product buffer V1, and the gRPC gateway 2 works with the product buffer V2. In 3.6, we bumped the gRPC gateway V to V2, but the problem is, we are still depend on product buffer V1, so we run into some compatibility issue. So eventually, we applied a patch on the source code generated by the JFT V2 to make sure it can work with the product buffer V2. Oh, sorry, uh, V1. Yeah, please draft the PR for more detailed information. Yeah, over to Sui. Okay, uh, since last KubeCon, uh, we have added some new uh, house track endpoints, that's LiveZ and ReadyZ. So uh, LiveZ is an uh, endpoint that reflects the fact whether the SCD process is alive or not. So LiveZ will return a failure if it needs a restart. And then the ReadyZ endpoint is to reflect the fact whether the SCD process is ready to serve traffic. So with these two HTTP endpoints, uh, the SCD house track is fully compliant with the Kubernetes API. 
So if you're uh, configuring your Kubernetes probes, uh, please use the new uh, house endpoints. And uh, this work is uh, done in collaboration with Chao from uh, Amazon. And then uh, another one is about the uh, sub-project. So Augur is a tool used by Kubernetes to uh, check SCD data. So this is a project uh, authored by Joe Betts. And he has kindly donated the project to a SCD organization. So um, with the Augur tool, you can directly access data projects uh, stored in SCD by Kubernetes. And then you can directly encode and decode Kubernetes projects using the Kubernetes encoding scheme. And then uh, probably the most useful uh, feature for this tool is to analyze the data stats by object kind. So you can easily find what, ob what kind of objects are consuming the most storage in your SCD. And uh, last but not least, uh, yesterday we just released uh, SCD 3.4.31 uh, with the work of James and uh, Benjamin. Yeah, I will quickly go through the roadmap or priority for the 3.6. Yeah, this is the roadmap for the priority for the 3.6. We have already covered some items in previous slides. So I want to highlight the most of two important features in 3.6. Uh, the, uh, the first one is support downgrade. The second one is storage to deprecation. Uh, 3.6 will be the first version for the minor version to officially support the downgrade. So we can support the downgrade from 3.6 to, to 3.5. The high level idea is when user run downgrade, the first step is to migrate the data schema to previous version. And the second step is to replace the binary or image with previous version. We do similar step for all the members in the class one by one. We have already deprecated the storage tool in 3.4 and 3.5, but the user can still enable it. In LCD 3.6, the storage tool will be decommissioned. All the data will be only persisted in uh, storage 3, also known as b -Bolt. But we still maintain the v2 snapshot file to support the downgrade to 3.5. Uh, just mentioned previously, uh, we are planning to release RAF 3.6.0 and BBOT 1.4.0. Yeah, just mentioned at BSU, we already added two separate endpoints for liveness and, and the ready health check. But previously, we only, we only have one health check endpoint, and we use a parameter to differentiate to use case. But it's not easy to use, it's, not, it's hard to, to understand. So the, we add two separate endpoints for, which is much easier to understand. Yeah, just mentioned previously, we also bumped the uh, GRPC and the GRPC gateway to the latest version. Yeah, that's all from my side. Yeah. Okay, uh, so now I will talk about some project opportunities in SCD. So a lot of contributors are asking, what can we, how can we contribute? So here are some uh, areas we are working on and uh, uh, need some help with. So the first one is on downgrade. So as uh, Benjamin mentioned, uh, downgrade is uh, one of the most important feature we will release in 3.6. And uh, uh, we're still uh, uh, in the middle of it. Uh, so we just added downgrade support from 3.5 to 3.4. And currently, we're working on the downgrade support in 3.6 to 3.5. So uh, these are the tasks we are uh, in, in this effort. So the first one is we introduce a new storage version stored and persisted in the DB file. And the second one is uh, we introduced a DB schema, a structuralized DB schema, and then added annotations to the struct and proto to distinguish different fields added at different versions. And then uh, there's a new downgrade command 
to initiate a downgrade and then coordinate all the members to lower the SED protocol, protocol version and allow old versions to uh, join. And then there is a new uh, SED util migrate uh, tool to downgrade the DB files and uh, the wall files uh, offline. And then we're still, we still need to implement the online migration of the snapshot files. And then we would like to add more downgrade tests. So if you're interested in working on this, uh, please contact me on Slack. And then another effort we're working on is to uh, migrate all the test workflows into Kubernetes infrastructure. So uh, uh, we're a new stick in Kubernetes now. Uh, so we want to utilize the Kubernetes Prowl infrastructure for our tests. So we're in the middle of moving all the uh, SCD uh, uh, GitHub workflows into the Prowl infrastructure. And hopefully with this migration, we can uh, automate the flag flaky test detection and then we can easily create issues and charge these issues. And uh, also we need a lot of help in helping, it, a lot of help to deflake uh, some of the SD tests. So if your interest is in uh, flaky tests, uh, please contact me as well. And then, uh, so to another important aspect is to, uh, for the SD performance qualification. So for any new feature we add in SCD, it's important to know that we're not uh, degrading the uh, performance. So uh, performance qualification is important. So uh, with the help of Evan, uh, we recently rewrote one of our performance tools in Golang. And then uh, right now we're working on creating new uh, on demand and periodic pro jobs to make the performance testing more accessible. So once the performance tools are running uh, regularly on Prowl, uh, we also plan to create a Kubernetes style uh, scalability interface to visualize the results over time. So this is just to make sure we have a stable performance uh, across uh, different uh, new features for SCD. So if you're interested in this as, uh, project, uh, you can contact James. Hey, thank you very much, Benjamin and Suyuan. So uh, with that, I want to um, have some community shout out. Uh, the SAD mentorship program has been running for almost half a year since the last KubeCon. Um, we have had a lot of progresses. Um, so Wei from Microsoft, he has been working with Benjamin closely on Bboat area, and he has been making uh, consistent and high quality uh, contributions to the code base and now he is our newest reviewer in Bboat area. Thank you very much, uh, Wei, I don't know if you're here or maybe you're watching the YouTube video. All right, and also Mustafa from Red Hat is also working with Benjamin and Wei on the Bboat area and then he has done a lot of uh, features in Bboat. So remember that page of Bboat, the reason why we have so much in good improvement in Bboat is because of the dedication of the engineers. Um, uh, yeah, thank you, Mustafa. <laughs> All right, the next two are uh, mentees uh, of Merrick. So Si Yuan, as you can see, she has done a lot of great works in the high priority areas, including downgrade, um, house check, uh, auger, uh, what else, test framework. So um, thank you very much for your great contribution. <laughs> Our next one is very special. So James is already the chair of SIG SED and he has already done a lot of great works and continuously in SED, but that's just not enough for him. <laughs> he asked to be a mentee and work with, uh, with uh, Merrick's help. He is now taking over the performance area and has been making a lot of great um, effort, making sure the uh, performance is not regression. Um, thank you very much. Okay, um, now last but not least, for sure. Um, Benjamin and Merrick, thank you very much for your dedication on not only contributing to the project, but also growing the community, growing the members. Um, thank you very much. None of this would have happened without you guys. 
Thank you. All right, uh, while the SED maintainership uh, program is still running, uh, we want to introduce the sub-project governance in, uh, framework, framework in SED. Um, this is not anything like something very new. It's very similar to like the setup of the rest of the Kubernetes 6. Um, so it aims to streamline the development and enhance uh, uh, collaboration with our growing community. So with um, the clearly defined scope of the sub-project, sub we want to empower the uh, sub-project maintainers to take the ownership of specific area. And uh, the transparent decision-making progress process uh, ensure the consensus and as well as the welcome the uh, welcoming the community input. So this structure would um, foster the innovation while maintaining the stability of the overall project. So to determine if something qualifies a sub-project, there are several considerations that we have in mind. Uh, first, it should be um, some substantial area of functionality in SED. And second, uh, we want to make sure there are dedicated individuals with expertise in each individual project. And um, it should be something that serves the needs of wider SED community. With that, we have some of the potential project candidates in mind. Uh, the first one is uh, robot robustness test. Um, Merrick has been talking about this in several of his previous talks you can find on YouTube. So this is very important to make sure that the, the SED is really resilient in production environment. Um, and uh, the next one, CI-CD workflow, currently led by James, is uh, focusing on the development and delivery process. It will reduce the manual overhead and improve the reliability. So next one is SED Cuddle and SED UTL. Um, this one is relatively distinct development path and needs uh, than the rest of the project. So I, th I think we want to make sure it get the attention it deserves to continue to serve as a powerful and user-friendly tool for SED administrators. Um, last one is a kind of question mark uh, for us at this moment. So Kubernetes is not using it, gRPC proxy. Kubernetes is not using it. And then there aren't many use cases that we are aware that's using it. Um, so it's really hard for us to make a decision on if we should continue supporting it or not. So if any of you guys are actually using it in production or your colleague, friends, families are using it, let us know and help out. And um, I just want to make a note, like before we can find dedicated people other than the current maintainers on all of this, um, the current SED project maintainer will continue supporting all of this area. But yeah, think about it if you're interested or if you actually already have expertise, expertise in this area, please um, reach out to us. All right, now with like lined up um, opportunities in this project and the frameworks that will support you guys to help us out. Now let's see how to continue connect with SED. I'm not doing this time. Okay. All right. So right here, right now in KubeCon, we still have a couple of sessions that's not done yet. I think right after this one, we have a, a CRD and dedicated SD as storage backend. I think this is from our um, Cilian and six scalability friends. I'm planning to go to that one. Join me if you want to. And then to, um, Friday, tomorrow, um, 11 to 1.30, there is a Kubernetes uh, Kubernetes meet and greet. It was uh, used to be called SIG meet and greet. So all the um, special interest group leads and contributors will be there. So please, uh, if you have any questions, if you want to contribute to certain areas, if you want to be that dedicated individuals on some of the sub project, uh, please come and talk to us. Um, and then tomorrow, uh, almost the last session, uh, 4.55 and to 5.30, Sue and Bogdan will give a talk about um, unleash the power of SED. So um, 
And then throughout the week, we will have a SED kiosk at the project pavilion. So we'll always have people there, except now in the sick meet and greet. Uh, <laughs> uh, but you know where to find us. And, and then it doesn't stop at KubeCon as usual. You can always join in us at our weekly SED meeting. Um, we're alternating between like regular community meeting and triage meeting. Um, so you can find something that you can work on if you're interested on the triage meeting. And then uh, it's Thursday, 11 o'clock Pacific time. And I promise we are seriously considering uh, EMEA and Asia friendly um, meeting time. Like stay tuned, it will, will, will happen. Um, and uh, where are different channels to, for offline discussions? We have SED Dev, Google Group, um, on the, the, the GitHub, we have SED discussion page, and SIG SED is our Slack channel. And you can find all this information in the community webpage. And with that, um, thank you very much. I want to uh, invite Merrick and James onto the stage and to answer any questions you have. I think we have like a bunch of microphones around. Questions? Uh, if you have questions, you can come up here or... Hello, thank you for all the improvements. I have a question about downgrade. So one of the big impediments to Kubernetes downgrade was SCD wasn't supporting downgrade. Do you know if there are any plans for adding support for Kubernetes downgrade now that SCD is going to support downgrade? So that's one question. And um, the second question is, is SCD downgrade non-disruptive? And for the snapshots that are generated with the new format, you were asking about, um, you also have on the roadmap the plans to convert them to the old format as part of downgrade, right? That was. Uh, so uh, regarding the Kubernetes downgrade, I cannot speak for that. Uh, but if you just want to downgrade SCD, uh, in Kubernetes is now uh, possible to do. And for the downgrade uh, process, uh, yes, you can uh, downgrade your node one by one without turning down the whole cluster. So it's non-disruptive. And also, um, we will take care of the conversion of the snapshot files sent from the leader to the follower uh, so that it uh, conforms to the old uh, format. Just want to add one thing about Kubernetes downgrade. This is like, for example, in GKE, the best practice is you don't upgrade or downgrade Kubernetes and SCD at the same time. So uh, it's, it's two separate pro uh, topic, yeah. Um, last year in the KubeCon uh, Europe, there was an ETCD session where one of the maintainers was kind of ringing a bell that ETCD is not as good as it should be. So now we are one year later. Can you give us honest opinion what is the state of ETCD today after one year? Thank you. I mean, do you have any particular questions or like which part? Um, Overall, I think we are going to the right direction because we are focusing on the quality and by having, or we are covering things between Kubernetes and etcd that were some semantic behaviors uh, that were never really tested before and having the having stability of or having this defined and tested and st stable will sh we're, will guarantee that the project itself will never diverge on or ca cause any breakages so i think like our current goals with or with that and goals of s sustainability i think we 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 are getting really out of, out of the, the main problems with the, before, like the main problems that we were hitting before, which is um, having one person know everything and depending on them and be really scared if that person leaves or goes, I know, 
<laughs> rules a lottery. So now we are democratizing the knowledge. We are testing or, or putting everything, automating it, and putting it visible for all community, like James' work on benchmarking, work on robustness, is that everyone can come in and, and validate everything by themselves instead of depending on single or some forgotten the Google documents or processes that we've never written down. So yeah, I think we are, we are, we are, it's, we are getting there. Maybe just to add one very short piece of context to that. Um, so the session referenced was uh, KubeCon Amsterdam uh, on the hunt for data inconsistencies in at CD. So if anyone wants to go back and kind of have a look at that, that's the session you want to look for. Um, and we've made a, that was, talking about the introduction of the uh, robustness testing framework, which has had a lot of improvements um, since then. Um, yeah, there was also the talk in, in Detroit about the, the man, like the previous topic of losing the, the knowledge from previous maintainers. So yeah, like the, those two talks. Well, but are we completely staffed yet? No, so we still need help. <laughs> Yeah, there was a mention of async writes for storage support getting added. Um, is that a trade-off between reducing write latency versus availability and data durability, or um, there are no risk once you have async writes? Sorry, can you maybe say again? Yeah, so so uh, as part of the raft improvements, there was a reference to now, um, HCD no supporting async writes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the asynchronous write is the biggest feature on RAF. Previously, you know, LCD and RAF communicate with each other via a channel. LCD receive, uh, process all the RAF message in a loop. Previously, LCD needed to sync the write head lock in each iteration before it can re receive next message from the from next message, next uh, iteration. But now, when the feature is enabled, LCD can sync the red head log asynchronously. So it can reduce the latency by 20 to 25% of our end-to-end -end latency. Yeah, there is no impact on correctness availability. Yeah, it's yeah. just difference that um, current write through Mm, limita limitation of the current write throughput are on raft protocol and network communication because you need to wait for work. So by making writes asynchronous, we are we are moving the bottleneck from uh, coordination to the disk. So we it should be etcd now sh with or with the change etcd will be f able to fully utilize write throughput instead of being bottleneck on your you know, network co and coordination throughout throughout raft. Uh, just one thing to add. This is a feature on RAF. The RAF has the ability so, to let the application to asynchronize, write, uh, persist the write head log. But this feature hasn't been integrated into LCD yet. Yeah, we are planning to integrate this feature into LCD in 3.7. This is the plan. Okay, so the writes to storage and both DB are still synchronous, but it's the RAF protocol itself that is now becoming asynchronous yes. as far as communication. Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you.